Texas Flavor Flav for my man Brandon. Hey, yo, Brandon, guess what, G? I got a surprise shout out coming to you, you know what I'm saying? Word up. Cameo has given us so much joy. G'day guys, welcome back to another week of Wine for the People. We're not doing blind tasting this week, so before you click away, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. I am, of course, back. Uh, I've been away for the last six weeks, and as Noah alluded to a couple of episodes before, all the hosts were kind of all <laughs> separated out. Uh, Henry's been immensely busy with fringe season in, in Adelaide. He's a, let's call him a celebrity in his own right. Uh, Noah's literally on the opposite side of this wall working vintage harvest. It's our harvest season at the, at, at the moment. Uh, and of course, I've been uh, overseas at Pro Vine at the world's largest uh, wine show. Uh, so, but for today's episode, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. Uh, we thought that we would take you guys on a bit of a bit of a tour back to the very beginnings of this channel. Uh, it's been about three years uh, since we started, and I thought it would be a little bit of fun to to go right back to the very beginning and do a bit of a reacts video, giving you guys a little bit of context as to what was happening at the time when this channel first started. If you are unaware and are relatively new to the channel, uh, this whole thing started at COVID, where we did live streams uh, literally every single day for about 120 days in a row without taking any breaks. And there were some uh, immensely funny moments that came out of that and immensely sort of interesting things as well. Uh, and of course that flourished into wine for the people as you know it today. But I've gotten lucky to go grab 10 or more different moments throughout the course of that 120 or so episodes. Uh, and I'm gonna, I guess, narrate my way through and, and tell you everything that's, uh, that's going on. So let's get into it. I should probably turn, turn sound on. I, oh yeah, no, we are definitely well and truly live. Uh, it's happening right now. Um, all right. And so yeah, we've got a ton of people here, uh, which is good. And he, as he spent yesterday setting all of this up, so we couldn't possibly move it. We're just yeah, doing I'm, it in the middle. I made of a commitment. Service. It's going to happen. It's so that was the very first episode. That was the very first episode, and I could tell you right now, at that at that point in time, I was absolutely shitting bricks. To give you perspective, um, you know, lockdown started happening. It was, I think, it must have been around March, early March, 2020. And I don't know for for you guys that in, and in, you know enjoy this at home. I maybe I would hope that we kind of make this look easy sometimes, and it's actually not to stand talking directly to a piece of electrical equipment, <laughs> trying to to connect with people behind a, a, a camera lens can be really intimidating. Uh, and of course, no more intimidating than doing it in front of it, like in a bar full of people at the time that we just couldn't coordinate the right timings to be able to have some quiet time to, I don't know, take a few, put a few takes on and, and see how you go. Of course, it was live streamed as well, so you didn't really have scope to, to, to stuff it up. Yes. <laughs> I was wondering why you hadn't opened that yet. I, was, I, I actually <laughs> looked at it, I was like, that's not open. I know what I can do. I know what I can do. <laughs> so I just thought I'd, I'd quickly touch on the, that first thing there. So obviously when we hit the live stream button, everything that everyone actually got to see from that point on was what they got to see from that point on. You didn't really get to see the hour or two beforehand where we were trying to coordinate ourselves. Uh, and also, uh, I don't know, it was a bit of a fun thing to settle the nerves. Um, I'm, I'm originally from, from Queensland. 4X Gold is, is the beer of Queensland. But the amount of 4X Gold we can see Consumed on this show, you know, maybe every single day. Uh, that that sort of eel, and and I was probably three be beers deep by the by the time we actually got the show going, just to get get the nerves up to get in front of a camera. Before we get into this, I just want to want to also note, like Noah kicked things into gear during COVID and really produced pretty much the entire live stream. And I don't know, aside from of course he works for Unico Zello a company, which I I founded with my wife. Uh, and run. I uh, also have a, a long-standing sort of friendship that really blossoms through this, um, through, like through the whole show. Uh, I have such a man crush on Noah, which I'm not sure is like a, can you legally say that you have a man crush on your own employee and get away with it? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. There's actually the jokes on everyone else, like because this whole like wine for the people show. Yeah. I've just repackaged apparently something from 2008. It's called Wine Squad. For those at home, um, there are still little like nuggets of wine squad left. There's I'm not even sure why it aired in Australia. It's great. That is great pressings on the floor of the winery right because now. Because there's going to be some obvious things to talk about at the end of this. So I'm going to show you, this is wine squad. This is a legitimate show that did air in Australia. I'm not too sure how far it actually went. So if, but here, here are a couple of adverts for it. Three blokes. Oh no. Two are blind <laughs> and one can see. 
And I was a little bit uh, toffy, there's a bit of mint there. But who has the best palate? It's got acid. What? It's got a little bit of sugar. Wine Squad, 8.30 Saturdays. Okay, so that's actually a really sort of fun point to, to, to make. It is for um, like for people that work in wine, uh, translating wine into like a digital medium, like actually they're putting it on TV or anything, it's generally pretty boring. And that's the big challenge with this channel. And to be honest, any kind of way that you're kind of incepting wine into a digital, digital space. Because all the work's done out in the cellar. Our way of tackling it is telling you the stories behind it or making it mildly entertaining, um, uh, doing challenges like blind tasting. I'm not sure. It's like, it's like politically kosher to get actual blind people. I mean, I'm all for getting blind people, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure if that television show aired today, I think it would be canceled pretty quickly. I don't know, comments below, what do you reckon? Wine Squad. Wine Squad. Maybe we should change the name of the channel, Loggy. Wine Squad. Oh, uh, awesome. You know, you know why, it's the diurnal difference. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, of course. Um, uh, Laura's face lit up in... <laughs> <laughs> Hot. I hope that uh, moving blanket isn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is like this is this, this is the gift that keeps giving. Uh, John O'Neill burning down our entire uh, our entire winery. Um, so just just for like reference here, there's a, there's a highly flammable moving blanket to the right hand side of the screen, like that table right there. And then on the opposite side of the wall is a commercial distillery, a alcohol producing machine uh, that is not allowed within 10 metres of open flame. If you've just tuned in... If you've just tuned in... <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is how you burn down a distillery. <laughs> oh, yeah, cool, uh, Kate. Actually, it's a pretty basic question. It's a pretty simple one. Yeah, but I don't know your favourite wine is a 95 Charles Hyde Sec Bois de Millennia. Uh, how do you know that? Yeah, I just do. Uh, <laughs> 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 We're getting good at this research stuff. Uh, yeah. So every episode uh, that we aired, probably it actually wasn't just the hour that we were uh, live and the hour or two that we're setting up beforehand. Um, it was the three to four hours of research that I would actually conduct on every single guest. Thing, mate. Yeah. Um, so essentially what you do is you, you jam this fucking uh, thing right through here. And, oh yeah. And then, um, Ryan and Phil of Little Bang Brewing. This particular episode was the longest episode because if we, I mean, we would just live stream for an hour and then, hey, if people started to, to drop off, we'd, we'd naturally close it down. And if the vibe generally wasn't alive, then, you know, we knew what to do. The vibe was well and truly alive. There were a lot of people still watching. And so we just continued to film for two hours. You basically just ah, give, it, give yeah. it away. <laughs> This is pressure. How do you know when it's finished? <laughs> Inspired by the likes of Ollie Morgan, who literally was on the show only a week ago, who's doing an amazing event called um, uh, Melbourne Maybe. And we said on that show, we are going to do something for the Victorian hospitality industry mm. specifically. This was episode 100. So this was, this was you know, I suppose when you, when you reach these arbitrary numbers like 100 or 50 or 25 or whatever, I think it's more a socially accepted thing that you do something special for it. Um, and COVID, I think no one ever expected it to go as long as it did. Uh, and the impacts to hospitality in particular. But this this was a roast me show. We got a lot of the previous guests that were on the in the last hundred days uh, came and basically took the piss out of myself, and we raised money. I think we raised uh, ten thousand uh, dollars for COVID nineteen EAD, which for me is just a, a, a monumental thing. Hey, yo, check one two. This is flavor play for my man Brandon. Hey, yo, Brandon. Guess what, G? I got a surprise shout out coming to you. You know what I'm saying? Word up. Just quietly, how, like, I'm not exactly, like, pro-technology on, on numerous fronts, but mm. Cameo, <laughs> Cameo has given us so much joy. But I'll give it a oh, shot. Oh, Katie. And the way I'm going to approach it, if this is okay with you... <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm going to interview you, because that's what I do as a journo, and you're going to roast yourself with your answers. <laughs> All oh, right, so this is Katie Spain. Uh, I, I've, uh, Katie's just one of the most beautiful uh, humans uh, in general, but also particularly in the wine industry. How much takeaway have you had? Because this takes a lot of time up at this time of day and you are looking a little bit... Haggard? No, I was going to say a little bit fatter than last time I saw you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the consequence of drinking uh, exceptional quantities of beer uh, prior to exceptional quantities of wine, and if you did notice on a lot of those episodes, 
episodes, I'm a bit of a, a, a I, I like to snack. They, they were... Oh. Created the second worst show on YouTube behind Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like that? He does a hundred episodes, invites all these people up to his fancy winery with his <laughs> expensive equipment and big barrels, blah, 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 you know, and gets people to roast him. You know, I thought that my nose was going to be the biggest thing in the room tonight, but clearly it's not easy. <laughs> Good on him. So, uh, uh, just All right, I don't care what's happening right now. BK gets a little big global energy big. right now because, like, that is. So, BK, Brendan Keys, BK Wines, um, uh, amazing winemaker in the Adelaide Hills, uh, has gone from strength to strength to strength and just crafts some of the most, like, well um, finessed and elegant wines that we, we have here. He also has, a, uh, like, a soft spot for some of the most amazing trees. I'm pretty confident this was from section 28. So, I'm bringing this in. Really? Much yeah. shade. Sure, so much shade. Yeah, just a cheeky bottle of Chasson Montrachet to go with our epic cheese and pork crackle. We have an extracted red that's seen uh, a degree of premature oxidation with a fair degree of OQs. We know it's New World, we know it's Aussie, we know it's South Aussie. We know that it's going to be um, uh, one of the classics, <laughs> one of the OG classics. I feel this this could be, I mean, and, and therefore, therefore actually very much nail, like narrows the selection. Um, how so at this point, um, I probably want to, I know exactly what's going to happen next because I remember this like, uh, and, I, and I've done this a bunch of times, typically with the same wine as well. This wine's pretty easy to pick in a lineup, like a blind lineup. Um, but if you notice, if you guys are at home trying to teach yourselves to like blind identify wines, um, you need to you need to taste like a lawyer. Is this Grange? Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, it's Grange. We thought we'd... Jesus fucking Christ. We thought we'd bring some uh, <laughs> big brand energy to the show. It's a nice, like... For me, it's the happy combination of absolutely everything. It's like, I, yeah. you get to problem solve all the time, no two days are the same, and like, the most perfect and wonderful thing about service is like, that moment of connection that you get to have with a person, and it can be like, 30 seconds while you're pouring their wine, or it can be a really long drawn out rapport that you have with a regular and you get to know them, and you know their birthday, and... Yeah, so Nikki Friedley, probably um, uh, in, 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 uh, of the people that I've met in the world of wine uh, in terms of f like as a front of house uh, and, and restaurant manager, the top three uh, I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, I was going to buy Oh, wow. Well, so you haven't even... Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, like uh, so this is really cool. Right. So this is Justine Henschke of the Henschke family um, and Henschke Wines. Um, uh, amazing, the eponymous label uh, in, in Australia and, and uh, really, really, really respected. Tasting a, she brought a tank sample. And you can go and buy this wine, and you should, because it's very tasty. It has been released. So this is just a tank sample at the moment. So oh my just God. For, just for a bit of fun. Like, we, don't, <laughs> we have no idea what we're going to do with it. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's seriously beautiful. This is insane. Like, so this, is this? This is, uh, so this, this wine became uh, a wine called Good Fred, which I just think is fantastic i.e. good fucking red. I could take the perfect opportunity now to actually ask Laura some of the questions that may be burning on your mind, some of the interesting questions. So uh, for those who are unaware, Laura is our CEO. She heads up um, uh, Oka Nation or Team Unico, which is Unico Zello, Applewood Distillery and Oka, which is a little aperitif brand that we have. What's it like taking over the range of production from your own husband? Well, satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that again, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Laura's nickname in our office is The Sniper because I am prone to verbal diarrhea uh, and use a lot of words without a lot of meaning. Laura uses very few words with exceptional meaning. Uh, when we're giving each other shit in the office, uh, Laura will remain quiet until the perfect time to inflict the maximum amount of damage with the least amount of words. And this is the best example that I could possibly give you. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully that's provided you with some mild entertainment and a loose amount of education um, and a bit of an insight into how this actually channel came to be. And of course, if you do have feedback, if you do have suggestions, jump onto the Discord um, uh, link in the description below. Um, that way you can actually talk directly to us uh, and join the community that we've got growing there. I think we've got like 400 people on there as well that are all from around the globe that all love wine and are willing to share it with you. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week.